All right, here we go. Uh, so I'm going to follow the homework master. Aren't you happy? But probably I'll get distracted and talk too long. And maybe won't fam even finish the first class, but let's try, okay? So, here we go. Uh, I called uh, the first course, and, and the fun thing about this teacher training is that uh, I'm going to share with you some of what was happening, why I wrote the courses. You see what I mean? Like, what was happening or what I was thinking about, so uh, if I can remember. Uh, so the first course is called The Principal Teachings of Buddhism, but the real book uh, that I translated is called Lam Tso Nam Sum. Say Lam, Lam. Tso Nam, Nam Sum, which is short for Lam Ki Tso Wo Nam Sum, okay? And, uh, okay, I was teaching Masha a new word yesterday. Where are you? She's disappearing. Oh, sorry. P -p -p pet peeve. Hmm? What's it mean? Did you get it right, Joel? My pet peeve. No. I taught her American idiom yesterday. I'm I'm American idiom teacher for a lot of my students. Pet peeve means uh, the one thing that irritates me a lot. Okay, and uh, it's people who misspell principal teachings of Buddhism. So if you want to fail your teacher training course, just spell it wrong. Okay. So let's talk about it. Principal P A L means main, main teachings, okay? And it's an adjective, normally, except for the principal of a school, which is a man or a woman who's the boss of the school, okay? But principal teachings, you're gonna spell it with P-A-L, which means main teaching, okay? What's principal mean with a P-L-E? It means an important idea, okay? Like the principle of gravity or the principle of relativity, okay? So get it straight, okay? Don't embarrass me in front of your students. I've seen many teachers do that, okay? We're talking principal teachings, P-A-L, okay? Some people have mistranslated it as uh, the three principles, P-L-E, but that's because they don't understand that the Tibetan word so uh, has to come after what it modifies, which is extremely rare. Okay, so Lam Ki To means, it doesn't mean uh, the principles of the path. It doesn't mean that. And many people have translated it that way. Uh, so you can just throw the book out if you see that at the top. And you don't know how many books I've thrown out that way. Uh, it's, so the, unfortunately, the word So, which means uh, main, primary, principle, P-A-L, uh, always comes after the noun that it modifies, okay? Like book of red, rather than red book. Okay, got it? Just nod. Sometimes the adjective comes after the noun. This is a dress of red. You see what I mean? Meaning red dress, okay? Anyway, people got confused. And it, it's a pet peeve, it irritates me, okay? So you're not gonna do that. Okay. Uh, so three main paths, path, paths of Buddhism is the real title, okay? I changed it to the principal teachings of Buddhism to make it easier, more accessible, okay? More accessible. And the book, the translated book with Tsongkhapa on the front uh, is called the principal teachings of Buddhism. It's not called the three principal paths, okay? And it was meant to be, make it more accessible. By the way, that painting, or that statue, on the front of that book, which is probably in the bookstore, I don't know. Uh, that's a real image of Tsongkhapa, okay? It's the only one. So uh, it was a real statue of Jet Tsongkhapa. And it's got big nose and big ears, and that's the way he was, okay? His enemies called him Mr. Big Nose. And he had a very big nose, okay? He, he was, face was very strong, okay? Fuerte, okay? And uh, 
that's a real picture. That statue was destroyed uh, during the Cultural Revolution. And uh, they put another one, they made another one that's all pretty and handsome, and that's not the real one, okay? So that's why it's black and white, because the photograph was taken in the, in the late 1940s or something like that, okay? All right, uh, so you, first course is based on the principal teachings of Buddhism, which is more correctly called the three principal paths of Buddhism, three principal paths. Now, path, lam, in Tibetan, what is it in Sanskrit? Marga. In this case, doesn't mean a, a road, and it doesn't mean uh, a method. It doesn't mean that. Uh, in the Prajnaparamita teachings, okay, topic number four, path is a synonym for understanding or realization, okay? It means a mental state, okay? So we're not talking about three methods of Buddhism. We're not even talking about three ways that you can go in Buddhism. We're talking about three attitudes, okay, got it? And that's very important. If you don't understand that, you don't understand the Course, okay? We're not talking about three methods. We're not talking about three routes along a highway. We're talking about three attitudes that are the principal teachings of Buddhism. Got it? So we're not talking about books. We're talking about ideas, three big ideas, okay? And that's something you should know. The author is Jetson Kappa. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> J means, by the way, Lord. It's an honor, honorable name like Lao, Shu, you know, like Lao, Lao Tzu. But Lao Tzu is like elder teacher, right? Or something. Like it's like that. It's, it's J. J means, uh, for example, diamond is called in Tibetan Dorje, which means king of stones. Do means stone. J means lord. So J Tsongkhapa means Lord Tsongkhapa. It's a respect word, okay? So you can call him uh, Tsongkhapa, but it's a little bit impolite. And if you call him J Tsongkhapa, it's more polite, okay? Sometimes we call him J Rinpoche, which means precious Lord. Rinpoche means like you're like a jewel, okay? So if they say J Rinpoche, they're talking about Tsongkhapa, okay? So you can use either one. It's kind of weird to say Tsongkhapa. Then a lot of people spell his name with a K-H. Tsongkhap. Kap. Like many, many people. That's a pet peeve of mine. Okay? They are confusing uh, the transliteration with the sound. Okay? When you take a foreign word and you put it in English, you put the sound. You don't try to capture the spelling in the, in the original language, okay? Got it? Otherwise, you end up with things like Sri Lanka or Sivananda Yoga Center, which is both mistaken. They're both mistaken. They are failed transcription. They are not the sound. Got it? It's a weird mistake. If you see a book that has some cap on, and t on the front, just throw it out. It means the person who wrote it doesn't understand the difference between transcription and pronunciation. Got it? What's the transcription from Moscow? M-O-S-K-V-A. M-O-S-K-V-A is the transcription. Got it? We pronounce it Moscow. Okay? So, got it? Don't put the spelling of the foreign language, put the sound, okay? Got it? Tsongkhapa, just K. There's no reason to put KH. They messed up my Lama's name at the passport agency. He's Tharchen, okay? Because they saw the, T, the TH in the transcription. Got it? It's so terrible to ruin someone's name because uh, you can't tell the difference between the the character and the sound. Understand? Okay? You're never going to do that. Or I will get irritated, more irritated. Now, his monk's name. This is all, I'm just working from the homeworks. Uh, is say, Lobsang? Chakpa. Lobsang? Chakpa. Lobsang means pure mind. Okay, lo means mind. 
and sang means pure, and B is a prefix letter, it's a love song, okay? Pure-minded one. Uh, Sumati in, uh, in Sanskrit, okay? And uh, his last name is Dharpa, which is what in Sanskrit? Kirti, like Dharma Kirti, Chandra Kirti. Kirti means famous, everyone heard of this guy. He's amazing, okay? Super popular, okay? So his name is pure-minded, super popular. Okay, that's his monk's name. Now, in the rules of monk's names, you take, your, you take the first name of the person who made you a monk, okay? Like the normal abbot period in Serame Monastery for 600 years is four years. So during those four years, if the abbot's name is Mike, then every monk who's made that four years, their first name is Mike. And we had a big problem at our ceremony because the abbot stayed for three terms, 12 years. Half the monks in the monastery are called Jampa. And it's really confusing, okay? You, so my first name, monk name, is Lopsang. And ultimately, I come from Tsongkhapa. You see, my teacher, 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 teacher. Got it? Okay. All right. Mm. Number two, what's the actual name of this work? Three Principal Paths, okay? You know that. It's not, the, it's not the principal teachings of Buddhism, but it's the same P-A-L, okay? All right, question three. We're working through homework number one, yay! Uh, now, in, in Christian tradition, there's a big uh, emphasis on epistles. What's an epistle? It's like a a heavy letter, like a, a letter that became a classic, you know? The letters of Paul, right? The epistles of Paul, which caused a lot of trouble. <laughs> he wasn't even there. Okay, uh, anyway, epistle means a uh, sacred letter, important letter, okay? So this book, the 14 verses, is a letter that was written to Tsongkhapa student named Ngawang Drapa, okay? Ngawang Drapa. You're supposed to know that, okay? And you can read it in the reading. Now, Ngawang Drapa had a crush on Tsongkhapa from the beginning. There's many paintings of Ngawang Drapa sitting at his feet. So what did Tsongkhapa do? You go to East Tibet and build 108 monasteries, you know? And he's like, what? So, but he wasn't one of those lazy disciples. He did what his teacher told him to do, even though he didn't want to go. That's the last thing he wanted to do, was leave his teacher's side. But Tsongkhapa said, go. And don't come back until you got 108 monasteries, okay? And he did it. He went to East Tibet. He built 108 monasteries. Guess what's the name of the last one? Uh-uh. That's hung. Da Tsang. Uh -uh. Da means now. Tsang means I reached the full number. Complete. <laughs> total. The last monastery was called Total. <laughs> Got it? I made the total. Da Tsang. And it's a famous monastery. I used to know the abbot. Okay? Uh, it's a cool, it's a good monastery. It's still running. Okay? So this book was written as a letter to his student who was upset because he got told to go out to East Tibet, okay? And he's trying to like, what do you call it? Soften him up a little bit. Yeah, don't get irritated with me, you know? Here, I'll give you a nice summary of all of Buddhism in two pages. He's like, yeah, okay, that's cool. Uh, by the way, for $50, Okay, I'm not saying you're interested in money and not dharma. <laughs> I'm just saying it makes it more fun for me, okay? I, frankly, it's more fun for me. Ready? In the ACI 18 Foundation courses, there's another important letter sent to Ngawan Dharma. Nah. -uh. Why? What's the letter say? Uh. Yeah, Nawan Drapa made the first monks in East Tibet. And he wrote a letter to his teacher and said, look, I don't not only built monasteries, I ordained a bunch of monks. And this is the answer by Tsongkhapa. 
Don't tell him, yeah, you want money or you don't want money, honey? <laughs> okay, he forgot. I stayed the money. Cancel that one, Chaplin. Okay. <laughs> you just lost 25 bucks. Okay. Uh, he told his student, do you anybody remember? Come on. Yeah, you want to meditate? It's not the seat. It's not the legs. It's not the face. It's not the breathing. It's not the topic. It's, yeah, did you respect other people's peace of mind last week? Or did you irritate other people? And the letter is, is incredible, you know. And by the way, in DCI, we, we teach them, you know, level three, we teach them meditation for like hours after hours. Then at the end we say, it doesn't matter. Nothing matters. What you hear in your mind is coming from how you treated people last week. Don't worry, your left foot goes up first, your right foot goes up first. You know, can you slouch, can you not slouch? Do you exhale long enough or not? Forget all this stuff, okay? If you want to have a good meditation, don't upset other people's mind, okay? Be conscious to not upset other people's mind. Speak kindly to people, speak uh, with careful consideration to how they feel. Watch their face. If they go like that, then back off. Because you're planting seeds to hear crap in your mind while you meditate. Okay? You're planting seeds for your mind to go, yeah, what's for lunch? What's for lunch? Okay? That comes from irritating other people, like teaching them a tongue and stuff like that. Okay, just kidding. Uh, okay. He has a nickname, okay? Say it, Sako. Umbo. Sako. Umbo. By the way, here the, uh, the master is mistaken, okay? The old master from 27 years ago. It's misspelled. His name is misspelled, okay? Uh, it's Wumbo. And uh, Sako is an area that he came from, like, uh, like Kansas or Shuzhou or something, okay? Like it's a, some Dalian. Some faraway place, okay? Wumbo means, uh, it means like a friendly word for local priest, local, you know, like the little local priest, Sako Wumbo, okay? Little local priest from Sako. Okay, so sometimes you might see him's name spelled Sako, okay? Wumbo, okay. All right. I didn't put his dates. Guess what? He lived in the same time as Sankapa. All right. Uh, I'm, I, I also try to leave out stuff that is going to overload you, okay? I mean, I could put more and more stuff and we, you would never finish the course, okay? It'd be like the alarm room. Okay. Uh, the commentary you are studying was written by Pabong Rinpoche. And the whole translation is the course, okay? The whole translation is in the course. The whole month. The whole commentary is in the course. Okay, got it? I, trans I remember where I translated it. I was on a one-month retreat in, uh, near the Grand Canyon. Uh, and uh, I, rem I remember I translated it there. Okay? Mm, dates of Pabanko Rinpoche, 1878 to 1941. Uh, now, he was probably the most famous teacher of the Tsongkhapa tradition for that hundred years, okay? He was number one, okay? So I'll tell you a little bit about his story, uh, and you can read it in the book, okay? So in the book, I got my teacher, Ken Rinpoche, Geshe Losan Tarjan, uh, I got him to uh, tell me the story about Pabonka, okay? And it was hard because uh, he didn't like to answer my questions. But I offered to drive him to Washington every month, which is a five-hour drive, and he couldn't get out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> so he told me the whole story, okay? So it's in the... By the way, uh, his nephew, uh, which is Geshe Losan Tarndu, uh, 
was brought up by Ken Rinpoche as a, from childhood and uh, became his uh, main attendant. And he became the Gergen, Kansen Gergen. What's that mean? He became the house mom, the babysitter for all the monks in our college. There are 12 colleges in Serame, according to the ancient constitution of Serame, which we found in Russia. The only copy. We found it in St. Petersburg. And uh, there are 12 houses, 12 colleges, inside of Sera. Sera May. Sera Monastery is divided into two halves. Sera J, where they're not so educated. <laughs> and Sera May, which is vastly superior. And uh, there's a heavy rivalry between the two halves. And there's a green line in the monastery. There's an invisible line, and you don't cross it, or something might happen, okay? S tough stuff happens in the monastery. You have no idea, okay? But you don't go over that line. So uh, we're from Sarah May, okay? And we don't like Sarah J, okay? <laughs> and there's lots of nice teachers at Sarah J, but don't tell anybody. Okay, so anyway, Sarah May has 12 colleges. You're from Geron College, okay? You are affiliated, as my student, you are affiliated with Geron College. So, in the structure of, of all the great Tsongkhapa monasteries, uh, there are, what do you call, local houses. Meaning, when I went to Princeton, we had an Arizona club. And all the students from Arizona, we used to drink beer together, stuff like that, okay? And, uh, so in the monastery, there are uh, local houses. And Gerong is east, east, east of it. Kiromuchi, Kiromuchi, Their language is totally weird, okay? And uh, not quite Tibetan, okay? Uh, so anyway, for some reason, my teacher was put into Gerong house by his uncle or something at the age of seven or five. Okay, and uh, the highest lama in history from our college is Pabonka. He's Geron Haas. Got it? He's from your college, so you got to be loyal. <laughs> okay, he's from our college. Okay, got it? Which is a great honor, okay, uh, to be from his house. And, uh, and, and I had the honor of debating with the third one. Okay, the third Pabonkar. He was doing his Geshe the year before I did my Geshe, and he's from our college. Tradition in the house is uh, you have to defend yourself, Geshe examination in your house before you defend yourself in the monastery, before you descend, defend yourself in Sera. So he had to defend himself in our college, and we only had 50 monks there. Uh, but the person who attacks him first is the uh, senior student who's not a Geshe yet, which was me. So uh, I was supposed to attack him first. So I'm attacking Pabonka uh, in the debates, and that was my job. Guess what question I asked him? Uh, after you get enlightened and you become a Buddha, how can you help suffering beings? Because you don't have the karma to see people suffering anymore. You see them as high-level bodhisattvas. All beings uh, become high-level bodhisattvas in your heaven. So how can those people help suffering beings after they become a Buddha? It's, they all became humans instead of dogs, you see? So there's no chew toys. Got it? In the universe for them. So we started like that. And I was really getting them. But when the opponent is a high Rinpoche, and you're just a schmuck, uh, the debate master will call off the debate. He'll say, hola, so, which means, OK, next. And I was like, I got him, I got him. He says, hola, so. <laughs> you know, I'm like, dang. And then we went uh, on the porch and continued the debate. Uh, for three, four hours, and uh, it was cool. And the abbot of uh, 
the Tantra College was with us. And we... we uh, okay. <laughs> oh, lasso. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's Pabonka Rinpoche. He has a nickname in the secret teachings, in the Diamond Way teachings. We don't call him Pabonka Rinpoche. We call him Dei Chen Nyingbo. Say Dei Chen Nyingbo. Dei Chen means the bliss that's associated with seeing emptiness in Tantra. Okay, great bliss. And Ningbo means uh, Shin, Shin Jing, Shin, heart, heart, just heart, okay, heart of bliss, okay. So uh, that's his secret name. But sometimes you'll hear him called Dechen Ningbo, okay. He was the greatest teacher of his time. Uh, he graduated from my monastery, our monastery, Serume, from Gyerong House. Uh, but he was not a high geshe. He was not a number one geshe. He was like a number three level geshe, which is what I am. If you want to be a number two level, you have to wait another four years. If you want to be another one level, it might take ten more years. And I'm too old. And I probably couldn't do it anyway. So, it's much more examinations, okay? But it's interesting, but he was also a third level geshe. He was not a high level geshe. And, uh, but he did something strange, which is that he started teaching normal people. Uh, and it was very, very unusual. And, uh, and then 10 normal people, not monks, came to his class, then 20 came to his class, then 30 came to his class. By the time he taught the alarm room you're studying in the morning, there were a thousand people in the room. Okay? And he became famous for teaching normal people. He was the DCI of his time and the ACI of his time, you see? And he got heavily criticized, very, very heavily criticized. And it was a very serious thing, like you could be murdered in those days. And uh, he, he stuck it out, you know. You're gonna see two photos of him. One is a young, handsome guy, okay? Then five years later, he looks terrible. He looks like somebody beat him up, you know. And uh, they say he was attacked by uh, spirits. He had a war with spirits. He had like a one-year war with a bunch of spirits. And it cost him physically. He, he, he never recovered physically, okay? You can see the two photos. It's very interesting. Uh, so that's the story. So <clears throat> he used to come to monasteries and teach the Lamrim, which is what you're studying in the morning. Maybe uh, for a month, okay? And that's, by the way, how a Geshe gets the Lamrim teachings. You get them because a Lama visits and teaches them extracurricular. It's not part of the program. It's a dessert, okay? So they'll, they will cancel all the classes for a month. And some high, high Lama will come, like Pabonko Rinpoche, and he will teach the Lamrim for a month. And uh, then they'll invite all the local people to come. And that's what's happening in the morning. That's what you're hearing in the morning, okay? So, then there's a Nyerpa. Say Nyerpa. Nyerpa means the refreshment person. Okay? And you're, okay. A monastery kitchen, like it said of me. We have to go serve in the kitchen. Every two weeks, we have to spend two days there, something like that. When you wash the teapot, you need a ladder to get up to the top. And then you need another ladder to get in. And then you clean it like this. It's, it's tea for 3,000 people. Okay? And uh, so that's the Nyerpa. The Nyerpa runs the tea at the Lam Rim teaching, which has 1,000 people. Everyone's got to get tea, everyone's got to get sampa, porridge, okay? So my teacher, and by the way, usually you only pick the lazy monks, you don't pick the geshe's candidates, because they're too busy, okay? So they have a mix cell. Mix cell means uh, they don't have to do the dirty work in the monastery. They can just study all day. They're pampered. The good geshe candidates are, you don't bother them. They don't have to work like other people, okay? My m lama was a goofball, okay? Goofball means a uh, bad boy. Never studied, 
just played tricks on people. His favorite trick, you know thumbtack? Like small nails. So people in Tibet, inside the monastery, they don't wear shoes. Understand? He would spread thumbtacks all over, just for fun. Then he'd watch him, you know. And he was really naughty. He was really bad. Pangda, uh, say pangda. Pak means little uh, piece of uh, flour. Like you make flour, and then you make little balls like that. And then when you're in the prayer, 3,000 guys. They're all going, you know, and when they go, and then you go, you know, like 10 feet away, three meters. And uh, he was the best. My teacher was number one. And uh, he didn't study, he didn't do anything. So that's why he got stuck with Nyerpa. He had to make refreshments. And uh, he was doing it, and, and Pabonka visited the kitchen to check on the refreshments for the teaching. And he saw my teacher, and he walks over to him, and he uh, puts his hands on his head, and he says, this one is special. This one is special. You know? then, he, then he just turned around and left, you know? Yeah. And then something weird happened to my teacher, and he, be, he, he freaked out. He, he got some kind of, I don't know what, spirit from Pabonka. And uh, he changed totally. And uh, he was offered a very important position, very good money, big temple, you know. Rest of your life, you drink tea and eat offerings. And uh, he said no. He told his teacher, no, I'm not going. He said, you're a fool. You know, the rest of your life, you're going to be wealthy. It's a good gig, you know? And he said, no, I want to be a geshe. He said, you, a geshe? And my teacher said, I'm going to be a number one geshe, okay? And he's like, number one geshe? Yeah, yeah, right. When you become a number one geshe, I become the throne holder of Tsongkhapa, <laughs> you know? <laughs> And uh, my teacher got pissed off, and he worked really hard, and he became a number one geshe. And then in his year, they had a competition of all the number one geshes, and he beat all of them. So we call Angi Dumbo. He was number one of, I don't know, 20,000 monks, okay, uh, in the debates. So, so try to win an argument with him. You know, if he says the sky's not blue, he can prove it. You know, don't even try to fight with him. Just go around him, understand? Okay. Uh, I still do that. Um, okay. Now, Pabong means uh, boulder, and it's a special uh, hermitage, a retreat center outside of uh, Serra. You, you can walk to it. You have to hike to it. It's like Diamond Mountain. It's very similar to Diamond Mountain. So that retreat center was called Pabong. So he was called Pabonka. But he was not Pabonka, okay? They decided he would be the incarnation of the abbot of Pabonka. But he wasn't, so what's the story? Uh, he's actually recognized as the reincarnation of, say, Changya, Changya. Rope, Rope, Dorje. Dorje. Very, very famous lama of the emperor of China. And there's still a temple in Beijing, and I've seen it, uh, dedicated to Changkya, okay? So this is a very famous teacher of the king of China, the emperor of China, okay? And still the, the, that uh, temple is still there. I've seen it, you can see it from the hotel if you get to the 20th floor, because it's surrounded by other buildings, you know? And uh, it's really cool. All right. Then uh, he was very friendly with China, and he, he, he really got along with, with the Chinese. So in the year that Pabonka was born, uh, there was a lot of tension, and people were afraid to call him his real name, Changkya. So they called him Pabonka. Okay, understand? Uh, they, they named him a different name because there was so much tension. 
uh, political tension, okay? Anyway, that's who he really is, 1717 to 1786, okay, Chankya, this Chankya, very, very famous. And he wrote four volumes Siddhanta, <coughs> Mr. Word, for zero dollars. <coughs> yeah, a study of all the schools. We kind of did a Siddhanta yesterday, okay? But uh, he, was a f he wrote the biggest and the most famous, okay, in his past life. All right, uh, now, Pabonka Rinpoche had a special student, okay, who wrote down his teachings. Uh, and uh, these are the days before iPhone recorders, okay? Uh, and people were <laughs> taking notes like crazy. And the, the Lama just teaching, no microphone, thousand people that you had to have a big voice, you know. And uh, so his student was a high lama called Chijang Rinpoche. Say Chijang <laughs> Rinpoche. Born 1901, uh, passed away 1981, okay. Uh, and Chijang Rinpoche became the highest geshe of, of his time and taught the Dalai Lama, okay. He was the Dalai Lama's teacher. And he was an amazing, kind, person, amazing scholar, amazing teacher, and uh, why we have the, the gift of liberation, why we have that book, is he, he spent 12 years editing those talks, and I believe it's the greatest book ever written in Tibetan, okay? It's the, it's the sweetest Tibetan language that ever was written. It's perfect. The book is totally perfect. The Tibetan is exquisite. And there, you know, nowadays because of the Cultural Revolution, etc., the level of Tibetan in Tibet is low. It's, I, I called a monastery many years ago to find a book. No one could speak Tibetan, okay? So uh, I believe that's going to be the greatest book ever written in Tibetan. And it was edited by Tujar Rinpoche. Tujar Rinpoche was my teacher's root lama, okay? So your Tujar Rinpoche's grand Great gang, grandkids, okay? Got it? It's a good lineage. Good lineage. Okay. Uh, so the person who wrote the introduction to your course, and it's on your homework, is Ken Rinpoche, Geshe Losan Tarchen, my teacher, okay? Uh, born 1921, passed away 2004, okay? All right. And he taught me for free uh, for 30 years. And I lived with him. Uh, for 25 years, okay? And uh, it was hard. He was a hard person. You could never win an argument. He never once told me I did something right. When I finished my Geshe, first foreigner in 600 years, he's, he's like, huh. <laughs> uh, but, uh, <laughs> so uh, his nephew was his closest disciple. And I'm pleased to say he's going to visit this week, uh, okay? He's very old now. He's about 80. And uh, we put him on a plane. He agreed to come. And I asked him to give a teaching about Ken Rinpoche, which is your grandfather, okay? Uh, and just to tell us about his personal life, you know, like tell us some nice stories. Geshe Lothar is his name. Uh, He's not a high geshe, he's not a great scholar, uh, but he's a great storyteller. He's like the best I know. And he did become the debate master of Serame, okay? Uh, which is kind of like uh, assistant abbot, it's vice abbot, okay? Uh, so he did reach this position. And, uh, and he, he helped me survive in the monastery, okay? Without him, I wouldn't have survived. I was the only foreigner to survive in Serame. It's still in 600 years. And it's only because he was so, he, he said, and he'd say, the green line's there. Don't cross it. Don't, don't walk around there. I'm like, I don't see anything. He's like, trust me. You know? <laughs> and uh, my whole career at, in the monastery is due to him. He taught me to tie my robes, you know, everything. Dressed me up for the Geshe exams. It's like getting married. <laughs> no, it's like three layers of, Stupid historical stuff. And uh, 
So you should be grateful to him. Uh, you should make him some nice offerings, okay? Red envelopes. And uh, you should respect him, okay? Without him, I wouldn't be here, okay? And he taught me to speak Tibetan because he never stops talking. <laughs> which is probably good luck for me, okay? And we lived together for about 10 years, so he's good. So you're going to get a nice... Uh, and I, I don't think he'll be able to come again. So I think it's kind of a special chance, okay? What day is that, Tim? So, yeah, he'll be staying here, but, but he'll give a lecture on Saturday morning. Okay, so anyone's welcome to come, okay? Uh, now, the text doesn't jump right into the three principal paths. Uh, it starts with some preliminary material, which is traditional, okay? One of them, perhaps the most traditional thing to say first, is as you listen to this teaching, avoid the three problems of the pot, okay? Which we covered in Kamala Shila. So there, as, as long ago as the Tang Dynasty, Tang Chao, 1700s? 700s. Xuanzang, 1,300 years ago. Uh, as, as early as that, they were talking about this idea called the three problems of the pot, okay? For zero dollars. Okay, one dollar. <laughs> give me any of them. Give me one each. Raise your hand, give me one. Uh, don't yell. Okay, hustle. Uh, yeah, okay, somebody else. <laughs> you do that in the Geshe debates, you're in trouble. Huh? Yeah, don't, don't, you can't pour water into a dirty cup, okay? So what's it mean? Let's do the other two. Yeah, give me another one. Huh? Yeah, don't be like a, 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 a cup with a hole in the bottom, okay? The teacher teaches and teaches and teaches and it leaks out. And I ask you a question the next day and you're like, huh? Well, what was yours? Did you have another one? Yeah, upside down. Like the teacher tries to pour in the stuff, but you're already full with, with other ideas, you know? You went to some shaman ayahuasca ceremony and you know you're not open to these idea these three ideas okay you're already you're off on some strange thing okay i had a student from ireland who re who she she actually translated the mandala offering into gaelic uh, what do you call it celtic and uh it was amazing and uh then uh, she was a very good student here, and then she, uh, she went to a ayahuasca ceremony, and she said, I'm going to record it. She turned on her video. They overdosed her. She died on the video. You can watch it, okay? And, uh, okay, stupid idea. Got it? Don't fill yourself up with dumb spiritual you know, okay, got it. You can talk to her father, uh, who's the head of the Ireland group, okay? Sad, very sad, okay? So anyway, don't be like a pot, a, a pot. The three things you should go into the teaching, before the teaching starts, okay? Be open, okay? I'm going to learn something new. I'll be open. It's not what I'm used to, but I'm open to it. Uh, it's like the yoga class we had this morning. Yeah, the teacher said, first thing he said, look, I'm going to do stuff you didn't do before. Just be open. Okay, that's the first part. Be open to it. Yeah, second one is don't, don't mix it up with other stuff. And as an ACI teacher, if you mix it up with other stuff, I'll kick you out in five minutes. Okay, ready? You mention ayahuasca in an ACI course, and I will kick you out. Clear? Do I have to say it again? Okay, you're teaching ACI, all right? Now, does that mean you can't teach something else next week? No. 
I'm not like that, okay? I understand everyone in the room comes from a different tradition. You know, maybe you're from a Jewish tradition. Maybe you're from a Christian tradition. Maybe you're from a Muslim tradition. And maybe you're going to be teaching in a Muslim country. Uh, then say cool stuff about Muslim, okay? That's fine. But don't do it in the middle of the course. Don't mix it with this course, okay? This course is ACI. This course is Tsongkhapa. It's a formula for enlightenment. If you add ayahuasca, it won't work anymore. People will fail. People will suffer for more billions of years. Got it? Okay? So I request. I don't request. I order. <laughs> uh, <laughs> don't mix other stuff with ACI. It doesn't mean you can't teach other stuff. You want to teach something else, do it next week. Don't do it in the middle of the ACI class. Okay? Understand? I request. No. I order. And I will remove your certification if I find out you're mixing it with other stuff. Okay? It's a formula. It works. I can tell you it works. It happened to me. Stuff happened to me that is extraordinary, unbelievable. So no one in the world can talk me out of it. People have tried. And I just laugh. You know, I'm like, what are you talking about? You follow this correctly, you can see the whole universe in your meditation. You can meet every living creature, billions. You know, don't tell me ayahuasca. Okay, I'm not interested. Then they're like, yeah, but get out. I'm like, yeah, but get out. <laughs> you know, I'm not interested. You know, I already have a Model X. Don't try to sell me a Volkswagen bug. Okay? And I'm not, what do you call it? Sectarian? I, I tried it. It worked. I got what I wanted. Okay? And, and I say you can do it too but not if you mix it up. You're going to ruin the recipe, okay? Understand? Okay. And it's not because other traditions are bad. It's not the point, you know? You don't put marble tofu recipe with a chocolate cake recipe, <laughs> right? If one is spicy, one is, it's not going to work out. It's going to be the worst thing anyone ever made, okay? Mabu tofu is nice. Chocolate cake is nice. Don't mix them. It's gonna be, let's do one one day and serve it to everybody. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? Luca, no? Let's serve it tomorrow in class so people remember what I said. <laughs> You're all going to throw up. <laughs> okay, Mabu tofu chocolate cake. Okay, maybe I'll make it just, just so you remember. You'll tell your students, yeah, your grandfather, Lama Geshe Michael, back in the old days, he made us eat a chocolate mabu tofu cake. And it was terrible. So please don't mix up the teaching. Okay? Who's going to make it? Candy, you want to make it? Come on. You guys are... I better teach Lama obeying your Lama here. Um, <laughs> Okay, uh, all Lamrim texts have three great divisions. All Lamrim texts have three great divisions. The teachings, A to Z, one, two, three, step four, one, two, three, four, five, to how to get to Buddhahood, have three big divisions, okay? Uh, and they depend on the motivation of the person in the class, okay? So we call Kebu Chung, say Kebu Chung. Kebu Ding, Kebu Chimbo, okay? They're called little people, middle people, and big people, okay? That literally, the word is little people, medium people, and big people, okay? Now, it's just a difference of motivation. Who's going to tell me little people's motivation? It doesn't refer to your heart. Height, it refers to your heart. Huh? Is that what it says? Yeah, I don't want to go to the lower birth. Okay? I don't want to go to the lower birth. All right? I don't want to be reborn as an animal in the hell or as a spirit. Okay? I don't want to go to the lower birth. That's little people's motivation. For a hundred, three hundred? I'm spending too fast, right, shopping? I'd make it a thousand. Hmm. 
Okay, thousand bucks. But I pay you later. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, what's the one teaching that would satisfy a small person? What they want? You owe me a thousand. You owe me a thousand. I'm ahead already. Sheesh. Good. It's canceled. Ah. Uh, the pen, okay, the pen, all right, a person who understands the pen teaching correctly cannot go to a lower birth. It's not possible, okay? It, you, you destroy all the seeds in your being that would send you to a lower birth. And can you imagine people complain that I teach it too much? They're going to thank me later. Okay, if you understand the pen correctly, Jorlam Su is the technical term. The mastery level of the path of preparation, which is when you have a deep understanding of the pen, uh, and the holder of the pen, by the way, uh, you cannot go to the lower realms. It's not physically possible. Okay, cool? So forget, Lama, forget little person, you're already, you're already past that. Okay, what's medium person? Yeah, I don't want any kind of samsara. I don't want any kind of suffering life, okay? I don't care if I become president or I become a garbage man. It all sucks. I don't want any of it, okay? I want to be, I want nirvana, okay? For me, okay? Then that's a hint about the big person. Big person wants, yeah. Yeah, they want everyone to be enlightened, okay? Bodhisattva, Bodhisattva. So these are the three great divisions of the Lamrim teachings, okay? All right, here we go. Question nine. I'm making it. I got three minutes, Tim. I'm going to do it. Uh, question nine. Name the three principal paths. <laughs> okay, they are called renunciation, which is a big English word that nobody uses, it doesn't pass the waiter test. What's the waiter test, Xiaoping? Loud. Good. When we decide in our translation team whether to use a word or not, I send Allison to the Mexican restaurant and I say, Say to the waiter, what does renunciation? Say to the waiter, I'm Chinese, look, I don't know English very well. What's renunciation mean? If the waiter can't answer you, don't use it in your translation. But I did, because that was 27 years ago, okay? And that's what I was taught, all right? And it's not a great translation, okay? It's not a great translation. Renunciation, okay, now follow me, okay? Now we're gonna do content. Renunciation means I will not ride in a fancy car. I will not have a lot of money. I will eat only dal and rice, you know, and bananas. Uh, I will live simply, I will not dress nice clothes, you know. This is the classical meaning of renunciation, okay? And it's not what we want. It's not what we want you to do, okay? It's not, we talked about it yesterday, okay? If you practice Buddhism properly, you will be successful whether you want to be or not. And you can run, but the money will follow you. I'm sorry, okay? And fame and clothes and cars and they will chase you down the street. You can't avoid them, okay? If you plant, if you understand seeds, and you plant seeds only to serve other people, you will still be super successful. I'm sorry, okay? How many of the great saints of Buddhism were princes? Shantideva, Asanga, Siddhartha, okay? Atisha, okay? Come on, okay? Got it? So it doesn't mean you have to run away from money and cars and girlfriends. Whew. Okay? It doesn't mean that. Okay? It doesn't mean that. It means 
recognize that if you don't figure out the seed system, everything around you is going to collapse and die, including you. Okay? If you don't figure out how to plant more seeds than you use up, you will die. And you will not have money, and you will not have a partner, and you will not have happiness. Okay? Uh, it doesn't mean you shouldn't have a partner or money or happiness. It doesn't mean that. Okay? Got it? That's not renunciation. Okay? I tried to go to a cave. I did go to a cave. I spent, uh, I don't know, a month in a cave. It's not a good place. There's bugs. I had, a rattle, I had a highly deadly rattlesnake, green rattlesnake. Bite you once, you're dead. There's no cure. Uh, I had a wolf come in. I had spiders crawling over me all day. It's not cool, okay? That's not renunciation. Get a place with a door, okay? Get it. If you can find a cave with a door, okay? But I thought somehow a cave would be more holy or something. It's not. It's just irritating. Okay, got it? Have a nice... I like to say, I like a small house, but I want it elegant. Okay, why? I hate cleaning. I don't want cleaning. I don't want a house with five rooms in it. If you are, somebody offered me one recently. You know his name. And I said, no, I don't want it. He, he keeps asking me. I said, I built it for you. I said, I don't want it, you know. I don't want a house that I have to clean all day, you know. I want a small house, ele you know, sweet, cool, elegant, tasteful, like, but small, it's less cleaning, okay? So that's renunciation, got it? Uh, you can have a nice house, it's, it's fine, okay, got it? It's not renunciation to wear bad clothes and to not have a job, and to wander around and stay on other people's couches. And I don't let those yogis in my house. Why? They always leave the refrigerator empty. These holy people, okay? <laughs> they always park on your couch. You go to work to pay for the couch, and then uh, <laughs> your refrigerator is empty when you come home. I don't want you to be like that, okay? That's not an ACI teacher. That's not a yogi. That's a bum. <laughs> okay? That's a Dharma bum. Okay? Make your own money. Be responsible. That's a Dharma teacher. The best, you know, I made a list of the best ACI teachers I know. And they're all responsible people. Some of them have families. Some of them have high jobs. You know, own, own big companies. Uh, but they're responsible. Got it? I would say that's one of the most important qualities of a... I'm not going to trust you with my life if you can't feed yourself. You see what I mean? I'm not going to trust you with my spiritual life if you can't figure out how to make $50 a day. Understand? Got it? Okay. All right. Second one. Uh, okay, so first principle path. Call it renunciation because I don't want to change all the masters. Uh... But what it means is, I'm tired of seeing the suffering of the world. I'm tired. I'm tired of it. Okay? I'm tired of it. That's all. That's all. I can't take it anymore. Okay? These wars in Syria, in, you know, Israel. Uh, Orit's uh, friends got a missile dropped on them a few days ago. You know? Uh, I'm tired of seeing this stuff. You know, I'm tired of these crazy things going on. I'm tired of people dying all around me. You know, uh, I, it makes me, I'm tired. Okay, that's, that's the first principle path, okay? What are you going to write on the homework? I'm tired. <laughs> I'm, that's all I can take. I don't want it anymore, okay? I don't want people dying around me, okay? It's so lonely, my, my old lady. Her worst suffering is that she's the last one. There's no one she can call. They all die, okay? And it will happen to us. It will happen to you, okay? There will be a day when the, the last person from this training dies, okay? So I'm tired. I, I don't want to see this anymore. I want to fix it, okay? That's the first principle path. Got it? I'm tired. 
if you want to show off your English, put renunciation. But I'm happy to take I'm tired on the homework. I'm tired of this stuff. You know, let's fix it. Let's get it. Let's, let's stop this. There are planets where they stopped it, okay? There's whole planets where people studied ACI and no one dies anymore and no one has to meet irritating people anymore, okay? Everyone has a Model X until Model Z comes out, okay? Everyone's happy because they understand Buddhism and every planet goes through this evolution. Some are already finished, some are halfway through like us and some didn't get Buddhism yet, okay? Uh, I'm, I'm tired of it, okay? That's the first one, first principle path. Second principle path, it's called bodhicitta, okay? If you see a book that says the uh, Buddha mind as a translation of bodhicitta, throw it out, okay? They don't know what they're talking about, you know? People always give me books at the airport. Oh, here, Gishla, here's a book, you know? I'm like, oh, thanks. I go through customs and I throw it out on the other side. Especially if it says Bodhi mind or enlightenment mind, come on, okay? It means, ready? The wish to become enlightened. It, it doesn't mean an enlightened mind. That's already enlightened. Duh. Got it? Okay? You have it before you become a Buddha, mainly. Okay? I want to become enlightened so I can split my body into a billion pieces and help all the people who are suffering of things that I'm tired of. Got it? It's natural next step, okay? I'm fed up with seeing people die. Then, well, what are you going to do about it? Heh, <laughs> I'm going to become Buddha. Because then I can split my body and teach ACI in a billion planets instead of just one country on the internet. Got it? Okay? That's, that's all. I call it the wish for enlightenment, and I capitalize the W, okay? I'm fed up with bodhicitta. Chitta does mean mind. Bodhi does mean Buddhahood. Bodhicitta doesn't mean enlightened mind. It's a bad, super bad translation. That's a James Brown song. Super bad. It's super bad. Okay, got it? It doesn't mean that at all. If you see that in a translation, just... It means the rest of the book is bad also, okay? If they didn't figure that much out. Okay, got it? Pet peeve. Uh, bad translations are 90% of my irritation. Uh, word is the other 10%. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, third principle path. If you want to become a Buddha to help all living beings, you got to see emptiness directly. That's all. Third principle path. Call it wisdom. But, you know, in English, wisdom means, like, wise person. They don't drive too fast. They don't eat stuff with a lot of cholesterol in it. That's not wisdom. We're not talking about that. We're talking about, have you seen emptiness directly, okay? You can be a person like that. If, if you follow this class, if you follow these teachings, if you do the meditations you learn here, you can become an Arya. You can join Nagarjuna, Asanga, Tsongkhapa. You have everything you need. Everyone in this room has access to the direct perception of emptiness. And most of the people outside this room don't. Okay? Honestly, frankly. Okay? Uh, you have everything you need uh, to see emptiness directly. If you see it, in the same hour, you see every planet and every person on every planet, and you love them intensely during that hour. Got it? Then what else is going to bother you your whole life? Uh, how, how can anyone make you upset or irritated? You know, they're like, I don't like what you cook for dinner. Hey, man, I saw all the billion planets, okay? <laughs> Calm down. <laughs> I don't care what you think about my dinner. <laughs> okay? Got it? You can't irritate an Arya, almost. Unless you have bad translations and stuff. Uh, but, uh, okay, I mean, what's there to talk about if you saw your own Buddhahood? 
okay, in the future. You saw the day, and you know it's coming. And then who's going to irritate you? I mean, sir, it's, it's, Andreas teaches a really heavy yoga class, maybe. But come on, uh, isn't that worth it? Just to do the ACI, see emptiness so nobody can irritate you? That's worth it, right? That's worth coming here a bunch of times. Okay, so you can do it, okay? And that experience that happens right after you see emptiness directly in the same hour, uh, there's nothing like it, okay? What happens the hour before you see emptiness directly? Come on, give me some specifics. You see a seed opening in your own mind for the first time. In, in mind-only language, you catch the storehouse opening. You, you see, and it always happens like that. Okay, technically, Jorlam Chuchok, just before you, an, an hour before you see emptiness directly, for the first time, you see that this laptop is coming out of your seats, coming from you, okay, everything. Then who's going to piss you off after that? You know, your husband who yells at you? He's also coming from you. If you want to punch somebody, punch yourself. Okay, <laughs> got it? Okay, understand? So all these things happen. You confirm dependent origination one hour before you see emptiness directly. Because dependent origination just means stuff is coming out of seeds in your mind, okay? And you see it directly. Why can't you see it before that? Geshe has been teaching you year after year. Why didn't you see it? It's too fast. It's 65 a second. You got to meditate, okay? You got to have good meditation, okay? Got it? Good seeds. All right. Those are the three principal paths. Let's review. Number one, I'm tired. God bless. I'm tired. Okay. Number two, I want to be a Buddha to help the universe. I'm headed for the stars next week. I'm finishing this planet this week. I got it wrapped up by Sunday. And then I'm headed out. Okay. That's intention. Okay, though you can say the wish, capital W, I'll take it on the homework, okay? What's, by the way, I finished the homework, Tim, and it took me the master. It's like six pages, good luck. I didn't write the homework for tonight, but I'll do it by morning, okay? Uh, third one? Yeah, the, the, they call it DPE. I, I, I didn't invent that. It's not so bad. Somebody changed their car license to DPE. Direct perception of emptiness, okay? All right. Okay, got it? Those are what ACI Course 1 is all about. That's the only main subject of ACI Course 1, okay? So all of Buddhism is covered in ACI Course 1. Why did you do the rest of the courses, geshe -la? I don't know. It was just fun. Okay, mm, the last homework question. I'm not giving you a break, okay? You got a pee, pee just get up and go, okay? You are allowed. Yes, but it's got to be really good, because otherwise I won't finish the class. Okay, it's not good. All right. Uh, the last question is, are these three principal paths physical, mental, or are they concepts? Mental. They are attitudes. They are attitudes, okay? They're not paths. They're not uh, concrete, okay? Uh, they're not even instructions. They're not sutras. They're ideas. They're ways of thinking. Attitudes, okay? Should have been called the three principal attitudes. Okay, all right, I finished homework one. Let me finish the, you sure? Okay, there's no microphone, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Uh, three problems of the pot. Number one, you're not open to learning. You're, t you're upside down. Number two, uh, what you hear, you mix it up with other, you know, ayahuasca, shaman stuff. Uh, number three, uh, you're leaky. Uh, Geshe teaches you something tonight, you forgot it by tomorrow. Got it? 
You don't hold it. You don't retain it, okay? All right, we're going to the second homework. You guys okay?